So here we go, another problem. And again, we're just gonna follow the same operation. On a problem like this, we gotta apply distributive properties. Since we can't simplify inside the parentheses, I do notice that I'm multiplying a number times my parentheses, helping me understand that I need to use distributive property. So I'm gonna multiply this three times both terms, and I'm gonna multiply the two by both terms inside the parentheses. So what I'll have is three times two x plus three times negative four. And I wrote a plus three because that's a positive three. Equals two times three x and plus two times negative six. And I put the parentheses around the negative four and the negative six so I don't get confused and say, oh, is it subtract six or subtract four? I put them in parentheses to make sure I contain that negative sign. Three times two x is six x. Positive three times negative four is a negative 12. So I wanna write, instead of writing plus a negative 12, I'm just gonna write subtract 12 equals two times three x, which is six x, plus two times negative six is negative 12. Now, I look at this and I say, you know what, that's the exact same solution or exact same um, expression on both sides. Therefore, no matter what value I plug in, I'm always going to have a solution. Therefore, I have infinite many solutions. But let's just go ahead and go through the process so you can see why it would always be infinite many solutions. Well, I always like to. Um, get my x's on the same side. So, however, when I do that, I'm gonna get zeros for the terms and I'll have negative 12 equals 12. And again, it doesn't matter what number you plug in by six, if I, when I do that on the left and the right side, I'm gonna multiply by six and I'm gonna subtract 12. So therefore, either way, I'm always going to get uh, the exact same point. So there you go. That is my uh, infinite many solutions to work with problem on solving there. Hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions, comment below. Thanks.